Hi, I'm Claudia. I volunteer for the Marketing and Communications Committee here at the Literacy Council, and we're going to talk a little bit about goal settings today. So our students are assessed by staff when they enter programs, and they tell us a bit about some of their goals. Your coordinator will share your students' initial goals with you based on the information gathered in the intake process, but sometimes students' goals change or they want to establish new ones. So let's talk a bit about helping students set goals. The initial assessment helps define where your student is right now. Goal setting helps to define where your student wants to go. And ongoing evaluations show how effective the instruction has been. In this topic, we will show you the difference between long and short term goals, how to use a smart goals framework, and how you can provide ongoing evaluation of your students progress. Most adults learners come with us with certain goals in mind. A student may say, I want to get my high school diploma, or I want to pass my driver's license test, or I want to be able to talk to my child's teacher. Sometimes a student is enrolled in a class like a community college and needs additional support, or students just have a vague notion of wanting to speak better English or get a better job. A main goal for many ESL students is simply better oral communication, listening and speaking. As you work to define and refine your students' goals, help them identify the strengths and the skills they already have that they can build on. Do they like to garden? Are they artistic? Can you incorporate these interests into their lessons? Um, also, look at what language coping strategies your student currently uses. Um, some ESL students let their children do all their talking for them. Some basic literacy students have very good guessing skills or forget their glasses to get someone else to read for them. So discussing these coping strategies with the students can help them stay focused on their goals. When a student see they're making progress, it encourages them to persist. And we know that persistence is learning. Uh, pers persistence in learning is a key success factor. Goals often change and evolve, so it's wise to revisit them periodically. This keeps your students focused on what they're trying to achieve, why it is important to them, and how they will get there. The handouts and tutor information book have more material and examples related to goal settings. Long-term goals are the product of dreams and visions. Short-term goals are how we reach the long-term goals. If you've been to a job interview, you may have been asked, what do you want to be doing in five years? Your answer will be your long-term goal. Short-term goals are defined by asking yourself, what has to happen next to get me closer to that long-term goal? Breaking long-term goals into short-term goals makes you more likely to succeed. For example, a parent who wants to help their children develop a love of reading, her long-term goal, can adopt a short-term goal to read with their children at least 10 minutes each day. When you and your student have talked about their long-term goals define short-term goals that align with them. If the short-term goal doesn't support the long-term goal, the vision will not be achieved. In reality, of course, improving English speaking and reading skills will almost always support most long-term goals. Just be sure that your student sees the connection between current literacy lessons and their long-term goals. You may have seen or used SMART goals before. SMART is an acronym for criteria that provides a useful framework for the creation of goals and objectives. Goals should be specific. I want to be able to talk to my child's teacher. It's, a more, spe it's more specific than simply saying, I want to learn to speak better English. 
which may be the big long-term goal. Goals should be measurable, such as I will write the name and price of four items from the menu of the restaurant where I work. Goals should be applicable. How will mastering the goal relate to the student's life? Will learning to read the menu help the students in their job or help them order food, food they want to eat? Realistic goals should not be too easy, implying that the student is incapable, but not beyond the student's ability to achieve with some effort. Finally, goals should be timely. Agreeing on a time frame for achieving a goal helps the students stay motivated and focused. If the goal is not being reached, it indicates there is disconnect somewhere, so look for under, underlying issues. Evaluation is an ongoing process and it should be something that you share with your students. Periodic checkups are built into most of our teaching materials, so they will be routine and they're great, a great way to let you know what you still need to teach your student. Pay attention to whether your student is lost because the material is too advanced or bored because the material is too easy or whether the material you are using is in any other way not right for them. Sometimes what the students really need, especially right up front, may not be exactly what you expect. Here's an example. At, um, at their first lesson, a student said, hiding her mouth behind her, uh, her hand, Min will speak good English. Her tutor uh, responded by saying, that's okay. Uh, that's what I'm going to help you with. The student was able to convey that she had a hard time understanding what people said because they spoke too quickly. So the first thing the tutor did was to teach her two valuable sentences. I am learning English and please speak more slowly. The tutor told her that people are happy to slow down if they know they're you're trying. Sometimes you have to start with teaching something very basic. Another student was a stay-at-home mom with three teenagers. She already had a driver's license and wasn't looking for work. The book had, that had been recommended to the tutor had a lot of lessons about applying for a job, getting a driver's license, and so on. The tutor then worked with the coordinator to identify more relevant content. Achievements can be measured in many ways. The same student always took her son with her to the dentist to interpret for her. One day, after a dental appointment, her son told her, Mom, you don't need me here. You did just fine by yourself. So also be, she also became able to do things like paying her insurance bill on the phone by herself. And this is how she defined success.